So I absolutely love this Viking situation. Trading back to, you know, just want to trade up to get a tackle. I actually think the Vikings got the better tackle with trading back. I mean, you know, people talk about his elite arm length. Well, that's a real thing. That translates very well to the NFL a lot more than a lot of these other qualities that people pay more attention to, such as like footwork, which you could argue, okay, yeah, there's some faster tackles, but you know, his strength and his arm length, that's a huge deal. And, you know, that's why I had him at number two in my tackle grade, in my offensive line grades, just behind Sewell. And for the Vikings, finally helping out the offensive line, helping out Kirk Cousins, getting an elite left tackle. I think he could be an elite left tackle or at least like a Pro Bowl caliber guy. I'm that high on him. And, you know, it's not like they were going to go into the draft with like, I don't know, or go into the season with like what, Rashad Hill? He's the guy who took the most, second most snaps out of the tackle position last year. At least that's what it says according to Pro Football Focus. Uh, you know, I don't know about that. And the reality is, when you get a, you know, I think Brian O'Neill is a fine tackle, so you get him, you get uh, Darisaw. It's a lot easier to fill that interior, I think. And, you know, the rest isn't, like, spectacular. Cleveland's fine. Uh, Bradbury's fine. Nothing special. But, again, once you get those tackles, the rest of the offensive line just looks a lot better. Love this pick and love trading back to get it. Just beautiful. Let's talk about why I love him as a player. Okay, so we'll start things off with this play. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's a good amount of what you're going to see. Uh, and really, what I look, like about Darisaw so much is his hands and his strength. And the reason why I am so high on Darisaw is because I, I think that those are the qualities that tend to translate the best to the NFL is strength and hands. It's uh, Speed is very important. Lateral movement, very important. But... If you have been a fan of my channel, you know that I selected Andrew Thomas. With, I said he was my favorite tackle last year, and my mistake was I was relying too much on lateral movement, which I've now kind of adjusted. I don't do that as much. And Darisaw, uh, I'm not saying his lateral movement is bad, but his hands and strength are incredible. Watch this play and watch how he gets over. Really watch that left arm and how he just completely is able to use it to stop the defensive end in his tracks up until uh, Darisaw ends up, you know, getting ran into from behind, which totally wasn't his fault. That was, you know, just unfortunate. But really good hands and really good power. That's what you're going to see on a lot of these plays. Like a play like this is another good example of that where really what's going to happen is that, again, one-on-one -on -one matchup. And what I love about hands and why it's so important is that in the NFL, when you get these fast guys... Sometimes you are going to get someone who can get past you a little bit. But if you have the hands, you can kind of get yourself out of that situation. And this is a good example of that. So right when this play starts, you notice that Darisaw is able to get his left arm in pretty good hand placement. But the, the issue is just that the defensive uh, player is really, you know, he did a great job of getting to the outside. So the angle is good right now. So just a tough angle for Darisaw to finish this block off entirely and this is where tackles can sometimes get into trouble however watch how he is able to push him back behind his quarterback so he's never really in any danger I mean the quarterback also stepped up in the pocket but he didn't have to on that play Darisaw did a great job of controlling there at the end so yeah I mean th that's what tends to translate to the NFL I know people it looks nicer when you can get someone who can just cleanly get over there and not put themselves in that position to begin with but that doesn't always translate to the NFL Darisaw's talents almost always translate to the NFL. Like, now I want to show this play, because, you know, that last one, that was a him getting out of a bad situation. Those don't happen too often. In fact, far more often, you see him just putting together highlight real level blocks as opposed to him, uh, you know, doing stuff like that. So, this is the situation. It's He's going up one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on the, this time on the other side of the field. He's still the left tackle. It's just uh, they're not going the opposite way, so that's why he's over there. And watch how once this play starts, you see how he gets that right hand kind of on that uh, left shoulder pad of the Boston College player. And I also should mention, although you can probably already tell by the way the blocking is happening, this is a running play. So his job is to kind of get that defensive player over as far as possible. You want to clear up as big of a running lane as possible. And that's what he's going to do basically with that right hand, right arm, and his strength. And, you know, one of the things that co constantly gets talked about with Darisaw is his arm length. He has huge arms, and there's a reason why people love that, and it's because you can get the hand placement you want quickly, which, as I said, translates to the NFL. And watch him just shove that player over. So there's a huge running lane, and even though the rest of the blocking wasn't necessarily fantastic, there were some good blocks there, but it was there were some, some bad ones too. However, Darisaw's block really made that play. This one's another good one of kind of another, just an example of 
how he can get out of jams, I would say. Because this is going to be another good pass rush. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, this time on the bottom of the screen. Watch how once this play starts, it's a pretty good pass rush. It's again, kind of just this, uh, trying to get to the outside, which is probably the best move against Derisaw. Try to get around him, use speed, because you're not going to use power. And Derisaw, at this point, it's a bit of a tough hand placement. It's not exactly what he would have liked. He didn't get that outstretched arm exactly where he wanted, like he typically does. So, again... Good job. These are his losses. I'm not trying to just show you his wins. I'm trying to show you his losses as well to show how he can come back from them. And again, just watch the strength. That's just power right there. And the play got disrupted a little bit, which isn't ideal. But when those are his losses, he's still showing quality traits, which is what I like about him. So yes, there are some negatives, no doubt about it. There's far more positives in my opinion. Now I got to talk about this one. To me, this is my biggest concern with Derisaw. It's not even the, okay, yes, uh, you know, not quite as quick as some other guys. I think that Slater has quicker feet, so that is true, but I still think Derisaw is the better project, or prospect, excuse me, because he is stronger and because he has longer arms. Uh, you know, and I think his feet aren't bad either. I feel like I'm being a bit misleading because uh, it's, you might think that I, I'm saying his feet is bad or something. That's not the case, but uh, anyways, this play is concerning for me. And it really has nothing to do with his physical talents. So it's going to be a, a play where it's going to be a handoff, but then you're going to pitch it back to the wide receiver who runs to the top of the screen. Fun stuff. Derisaw is going to start off blocking the player who I have in that box right there, but this block probably shouldn't matter too much. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Like, as you see, that defensive tackle runs to the wrong side of the field because he didn't know that that's what the play was. So that's why it's a good play. And now Derisaw has a linebacker that he could potentially try and block. And what's going to be concerning about this is going to be uh, Derisaw's effort on this play because there's going to be no effort on this play. Watch him just really, I mean, kind of lazily just jog over there. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just, it's not what I would have liked to see. I would have liked to see someone maybe hustle a little bit more, see if you can get a downfield block. Uh, would it have helped that much? I don't know. I think he could have probably blocked 55 out of the way a little bit and 55... Uh, did kind of help make that tackle, not entirely. I'm not sure if it would have mattered too much, but just I saw that a few times. It's concerning for me. It is. I still think it's a great. He's a great player, and I think that he's going to be a great uh, prospect. I think that you know he was my second graded tackle, and in some draft class he would be number one. It's just that you know there's the Panay Sewell thing, so he's number two, but he's really good. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this decision? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.